Sao Tom is a beautiful undeveloped tropical island in the middle of nowhere. In fact, slap bang in the middle of nowhere. Sitting on the equator, zero east, zero west. It is the center of the world. This Portuguese speaking island is about a hundred miles off the west coast of Africa. About six and a half hours flying time from Lisbon in Portugal. Arriving early evening and it's still almost 30 degrees centigrade. I could see from the aircraft that the main town is located on a sweeping bay, which is home to most of the nearly 200,000 residents. The old town looks like it's seen better days, but it's still got a lively atmosphere. The preferred mode of transport is small motorcycles, and they run motorcycle taxis. And as is traditional throughout most of Africa, everything is carried on the head. Even a mobile shop. The need to balance gives all the ladies a very good upright posture. There is great excitement every afternoon when it's time for the fishing boats to come home. First in gets the best price, so every care is taken with health and safety. All the ladies crowd round to negotiate the best price of the day. They then load them into the plastic bowls balanced on their heads and walk up the hill way up into the inland villages to sell the fish on at a profit. Alternatively, you can have it cooked fresh in this luxurious street kitchen. Nothing goes to waste and sales are made from old sugar sacks. The beaches are lovely and the sea is delightfully warm, but some of them are scattered with the skeletons of lost ships. The island is so remote that if you're unfortunate enough to run aground, it would cost more to get a tug to come all the way from Lagos than the ship is worth. As I had the luxury of a hire car, I gave a lift to some children on their way home from school, and also this friendly looking guy who was carrying a, a big bunch of palm oil seeds. The centre of the island is quite mountainous and very sparsely populated. All the roads are lined with these beautiful wild flowers and miles and miles of banana plantations. One of the most striking features is the Pico Grande. This massive volcanic plug stands over 1,200 feet high, one of the largest in the world. And from this viewpoint is still almost five kilometers away. I met this young lad driving his cows along the road, which allowed me to take a photograph, which I consider to be the best I've ever taken. On my trip back, I met this crazy local guide called Engracio, who gave me a tour 
of the plantation where the chocolate and coffee are grown, and also the derelict factory where it used to be produced. Apparently, in its heyday, it employed over two and a half thousand workers and also housed their families, making a population of nearly 7,000 people, complete with its own hospital, which must have looked impressive back in 1928. Despite its decline, chocolate means are still grown and dried here before being taken into town to a more modern processing plant. And Gracio also show me how the dust off a palm leaf will make a temporary tattoo, although it shows up much better on his arm than it does on mine. On my way back, I passed through a local village and stopped for a walk on a nearby beach. This is an island of contrast from squalor to beauty. Babies are typically carried on the back like this. I don't know how long the boats go out for, but they all seem to have an excellent catch. After a particularly long and bumpy trip, I come across this beautiful waterfall. Before heading off on my next adventure, I just checked out this local market that appears to sell about everything. Sadly, the weather doesn't seem quite so good today. Typical. It always seems to rain on a wash day. As if I hadn't had enough excitement, I've now been asked to do a photo shoot for a wannabe model. This is Rebecca, who's on holiday from Lagos. Heading to the airport, I am now off on a short visit to Principe, a neighbouring island about 90 miles away, but not in this aircraft. Seven Air, although quite elderly, looked in a better condition. And we eventually made it to 12,000 feet.
and just 45 minutes later, we make it to the beautifully green island of Principe. You just cannot believe how quiet, peaceful and unspoilt Principe is. After a far too short stay, I make my way back to Seo Tom to catch my international flight on my way home via Lisbon. It would be impossible to stop in Portugal without sampling their custard tarts. This has been a fascinating trip, but I can't leave without one more look at my favourite photograph.